Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on this 2005 Toyota Camry. I'm going to be replacing the serpentine belt on it along with the other accessory belts and putting a new water pump in that came with the same kit. Once you're digging into this project, you might as well do all that while you're in there because it's a little bit of a headache to get to it. This is a similar procedure you would do on like a 2004 Toyota Avalon or probably several years in that area. Any vehicle that has a serpentine belt instead of a timing chain. This kit came from Napa. Um, you can also order them online. I put a kit in before off of Amazon and it is a really good kit. This one here comes with the standard stuff. You've got your serpentine belt and then your uh, water pump and probably the water pump gasket along with idler pulleys, a new tensioner, and an idler pulley. And once we get this done, we'll put this sticker on the outside of the cover, letting the next person know when the timing belt was changed. And then obviously there's uh, some instructions in here as well. Your rear cam and your front cam and your, uh, your crankshaft pulley has to be all lined up for the timing to be correct. So I'm going to start out with jacking the front end of the car up because I want to be able to access the bottom of the motor to see how things are. This is a car that somebody just bought. They haven't really checked it out very well, so I'm going to kind of do a little bit of an inspection. And then um, the tire on the passenger side has to come off anyway, so I'm just going to get everything blocked up in the front so I have good access to everything. We have to remove this plastic cover here to get into the belts that are in there to loosen the tensioner and whatnot. These are, I think, 10 millimeter screws. We're gonna be taking those out. There's a little push pin back here that's holding this side of it. All right, now that we got all that opened up, we're gonna go up and uh, start loosening up these belts. We have to start with the uh, alternator belt because it's the one on the outside. There's a power steering belt on the inside. So we're gonna loosen the alternator up first and then take that belt off and then loosen up the second belt. We're also gonna have to be removing like the motor mount here and some of this stuff up here to get access to this. The little dowel likes to hold on to this bracket here. I unhooked my uh, antifreeze line running over here so they don't get in the way. I try to keep all my pieces that I take off here pretty organized so I know where it goes where. To loosen the alternator up, I have to loosen this bolt here. It's the pivot bolt. And then this bolt down here keeps this tight, the tightener tight down here, this mechanism, so that then I gotta loosen this up to actually lift the alternator down. This is 9 16 here. Crack that loose. I think eventually we may have to take this bracket off anyway, but we're gonna just for now we're just gonna take this bolt loose. It's kind of tight down in here, getting down to this one. I think that might be 7 16 down there. Well, that's maybe a metric. That's a 12. It's kind of frustrating when they mix and match metric and English. Get that loose. I have to have a swivel or something to get to that one. This belt's in good shape. And the people that own the car, they went ahead and replaced this right away because they knew it was about ready to go. It was all cracked. So we'll keep this belt for the new install. All right, to get this belt loose, we have to loosen this up and then we can smack this bolt head up and that will loosen this pulley up and let this belt come off. This bolt here is a 12 millimeter. You could also take like a pry bar and put it in here and pry this up.
This belt is cracked. It's old, probably never been replaced or it's been a long time. So definitely need a new one of these. This is the old one. And then this is the new one from Napa. All right, now that we got both those belts off, we're gonna start taking this uh, cover off here of the uh, timing belt. It's held together by the, I believe they're 10 millimeter screws. Several locations are some way in the back, it's hard to get to. We're gonna get some of this stuff out of the way so that we can get to the back a little bit better. This little plastic cover comes off if we can release this here with a screwdriver. This will slide off. This is part of the wiring harness, so just be careful with it. It's loose now. It never really gets too far out of the way, but enough that you can get back here and get these bolts out. There's one, I think, at the yeah, at the very back here, which is a real pain to get to. There's one right down here. And there's some on the bottom here. Some of them you can get from underneath. There's one here. So we're just gonna start taking these out. These are 10 millimeter. To get to this one, you about have to get this bracket off. I think that's when I loosen it up and move it out of the way. This just actually has a slot on one end of it. You can just slide it out. I like to keep this bolt in here so my alternator stays in place. That's a bad one back there. Yeah, got it. We're getting her loose. Yeah, we got crack in here. So that definitely is on its last leg. All right, I got at least one down on the bottom yet. Right in here. I'm just gonna point it out to you. It's right below this bracket. All right, so here's all the bolts that I had to take out of that cover. There's, looks like there's six bolts. However, once you get it loose like this, it won't come out yet because part of this motor mount covers part of it as well. So you actually have to take, you, this one's off from that bracket I took off. Then there's a bolt here. There's a bolt we just took off on the plastic. And then there's another nut down lower. Basically four things holding this on too. Oh, and a fifth one right here. This top bolt here is a 12 millimeter. Took the nut off the bottom one. The nut was already off of this one. Took these two bolts out. Oh yeah, one more thing. So this piece is actually inside of a piece down here behind the um, crank pulley. So I gotta remove the crank pulley to get that piece undone so I can get this piece undone so I can get this piece undone. I forgot, it's kind of like a puzzle. In order to break this loose, you have to have a uh, 22 millimeter impact socket and you definitely need an impact to break this loose. Once you get that uh, pulley loose, you have to use a pulley remover to uh, get that pulley off. And I just have a cheap little pulley puller here. It comes with different size bolts. All right, you want those bolts to be in several threads so you don't rip them out. And then you just take a crescent wrench and just turn that a little bit. Shouldn't take a whole lot, pop that loose. There we go. So then this is the bottom part of that cover that you gotta get off to get the rest of it off. There's one right up in there. All right, I think there's one more 10 millimeter up behind here we gotta get. When I had to loosen this up, I had to smack this up to get this pulley loose on this power steering. Now it's blocking my access to that 10 millimeter screw back there. So I'm gonna have to knock this back down out of my way a little bit for the time being. No. Okay, in order to get to the screw back here, 
I'm gonna have to loosen this bracket up and move it out of the way because it's still in the way of that 10 millimeter screw. Wow, that bolt was tight. I had to get a six point socket to get a grip on it. So I got it loose. Now I can move that out of the way for now. And then I can get to that 10 millimeter back there that's holding the rest of this cover on. It's right there. Now this cover will come right off. There's our timing belt. Don't lose any of your parts. Don't lose your little keyway here. We're gonna take all these other covers off real quick. And then this piece here has to come off as well. So it's a little tricky to get it out of here because the studs are really long, but you can't do it. All right, so there's two covers. There's your covers. This one had to come off first, then this one, then this one. So they'll obviously go back together in reverse order. This one will go on first, then this one, then this one. All right, how to release the pressure on this belt, this is the tensioner right here. So we're gonna back this 10 millimeter bolt out. When you install your new one, this little piston here is actually held in by a pin that you release once you have this in place. I got one bolt out of the tensioner. There's another bolt behind this bracket. If I got that out of there, that was a little tricky. So the shorter bolt goes up top, the longer bolt goes down here. So just make sure you get those in right. I like to put my bolts back in the holes if I can until I need them again, that way I know where they go. So now we should be able just to slip that belt off. So as you can see, this is weather check. This car has about 180,000 miles on it, so I would say this belt didn't have a whole lot more life left to it and they would have been stranded. Now we're just going to take these idler pulleys off, take this water pump out and um, swap them out. So that's what it looks like right now. I got the belt off. Now the kit has a water pump. They recommend that you go ahead and just change out the water pump while you're in here. Some people even suggest that you change out the camshaft and the crankshaft seals while you're in here. So we're gonna definitely change out the water pump because that came with the kit. And in order to do that, we have to remove these camshaft pulleys and this plastic shroud. So that's what it looks like with the belt out of there. So we're gonna go ahead and take the water pump bolts out. We're definitely gonna switch the water pump and the gasket out. We're gonna take this pulley off. It just has a bolt in the center there that holds it on. And we're going to take out this uh, the tensioner pulley as well. We got one in the kit. This uh, tensioner pulley is a um, hex head. Looks like a 12 millimeter. That's really tight, that tensioner pulley, so I'm gonna use a Allen wrench so I don't bust my socket. Here we go. So this bolt goes in like this. It has a washer on it. I want to take this out and put it right back in there. So now it goes. Okay, so we're ready to remove the water pump. When you do this job of replacing this timing belt, sometimes these uh, the cam seals will be leaking behind these sprockets. But this looks really good. I don't see any leakage back there, behind there. Everything looks really dry. So this only has 180,000 miles on it. I don't think I'm gonna replace the seals. Sometimes, you know, you replace a seal, get it all back together, and for some reason, a new seal leaks. I'm not gonna take a chance on that since these look really good. <laughs> bunch of 10 millimeter nuts down in here and then the other ones are bolts there should only be six 
six fasteners holding this in. You got the three here that I took out, and then we have these three nuts here that I took out. And we're losing some antifreeze, which I figured would happen. So that is stuck behind that metal shroud, so we are gonna have to take these um, pulleys off. And that means that we'll probably have to realign them when we're done. The last time I did this type of a job, I had to buy one of these tools here to hold the sprockets in place. So I got this on there like that. So now when I go to loosen it, this will hold it from turning. This is a uh, 17 millimeter here. This one back here is the biggest pain because you gotta get a hold of that sprocket so you can loosen it up and it is really difficult to get to. As I turned it, I was able to shove this wrench forward and I think I got a good grip on that pulley now. If I can just break it loose. I think I got it. Once you crack it loose, it comes right off. Notice how these are opposite. The rim is on the outside on this one, and the rim is on the inside on this one. I put my bolts in there to make sure I keep them facing the right direction. Now I just need to take all these 10 millimeter screws out. Some back there, some are up here, and then this should come right off. I just cut that. Seals look really good. No leaks. Back one looks really good. So there's some buildup of just debris in here. I'm gonna blow it all out. I'm gonna hold this water pump in while I do it so I don't get any debris in there. Actually, I'm just gonna tighten this back up real quick so it doesn't let any debris in. That's a tight fit coming out of there. I'm pretty sure it comes out, but man, it ain't, ain't coming out easy. I'm gonna jack the motor up just a little bit and see if that helps. All right, what we're gonna do is just push up on that oil pan just a little bit. Just enough to get it a little bit more space. Hair more. There we go, it's lifting the car. There we go, that's all it took. Just jacking the motor up just a little bit. Give us a little more space. Now we definitely just want to clean the surfaces off here. Maybe take some light sandpaper, or abrasive paper, and <clears throat> make sure we got a nice, clean, smooth surface. All right, I'm just taking some old emery paper here and uh, gonna rub the surfaces, make sure they're cleaned up. I have this little abrasive stone I'm gonna use. That's smooth, it just looks like it's got stuff there, but it doesn't. So all my mating surface here is clean and got all the grit out of there. You don't technically need to put any gasket sealer on this. It's a rubber seal that seals on itself. All right, these line up on these studs. So everything should line up just perfect. And then we feed this water pump on. And it should fit better now that we got that motor jacked up there we go look at that fit now we just put our bolts back in here these bolts get torqued to um, 16 foot pounds or 200 inch pounds I believe and we're just gonna snug it up with the air ratchet I got my torque wrench here I'm not gonna be torquing these very much so 16 foot pounds
got the water pump in. I wanna pull this bottom pulley on the crank here off and just make sure that the seal looks good behind it before we go any farther. Looks pretty good. Got some antifreeze from where I took the pump off. Other than that, it looks really good. Alright, now we're going to get the sprockets back on. This one goes to the rear with the, um, the ledge on the outside. And this one goes on the front. They line up with that pin right there. So there's no way to get them off from the cam. So now we have to get a good grip on these to get them torqued down. All right guys, we're gonna torque down this uh, pulley here. Got my sprocket chain wrench on. I got a little cork in there to protect the teeth a little bit. Got my torque wrench right here. The recommendation is um, 72 foot pounds. So we're gonna tighten this down. All right, now we're gonna do the rear. It's a lot harder to get to. I'm gonna go in behind this wiring harness to get a straighter shot. There we go. Got a lock on it. 72 foot pounds. Let's give you a look at that situation. So I went behind that wiring harness around that back pulley. All right, now I gotta go about getting all the cam pulleys and crank pulley in the right position to start putting the new belt on. All right, so we got the sprockets torqued down, got the bottom pulley back on, which we just checked the seal on it. So before we go any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and put the new idler pulley on and the new tensioner pulley. I'm gonna torque this down to about 50 pounds. We're gonna get this tensioner pulley on here. Don't forget to put your washer in the back. Make sure it moves freely. Now we we'll torque that tensioner bolt down to about 72 pounds. All right, we're about ready to install the timing belt. So this belt has two marks on it, one right here and one right here. Those marks coincide with the marks on the pulley. So that mark has to line up with that pulley mark. This mark back here has to line up with the mark on the pulley back there. And then on the bottom here is another mark. This arrow shows you which direction the belt goes. So the front is this way as the arrows are showing. And this mark here is the one that has to line up with the actual divot on the bottom pulley, the crank pulley. So the most important thing is that those marks line up. Okay, we're gonna start by lining the bottom up with the belt um, in the right position. So we're gonna turn that crank so that our divot right here is over here so we can line the mark up on the belt with the actual pulley. So we're gonna temporarily put this crank bolt in just so we can turn it to the position that we want it. Get that bolt back out for now. All right, now we should be able to get this belt lined up with that divot where it goes. As you see, this little thing here will keep this belt from coming off once we get it in the right position. I had to get some more slack so I could move this belt where I needed it. Okay, so the divot's right there. Right there's where that mark goes. See that mark is lined up with that divot. That's where you want it. Now I'm gonna put this washer back on to keep that belt in place and just put this bolt back in loosely so it just doesn't come off. All right, now we should be able to line the other spots up. 
All right, so we gotta kind of work backwards. This part of the line going from this crankshaft to the back pulley is the part that gets tensioned. All the rest of it has to be in line. So we're gonna take this belt here, and we're gonna go around our water pump, and we're gonna bring it around to this first pulley, and we're gonna try to get it lined up. Okay, so we're missing about one groove here. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I usually use an end wrench and move this pulley so it doesn't take off on me because it's obviously gonna have cam pressure. So I'll use an end wrench and I will try to carefully move this one, one notch. Right there. So now we're under tension. We're still in our groove down below and we're in the right spot on this pulley. So now we're gonna work our way to the back. And this is the challenging one, obviously. Okay, I've laced it. Actually, this is, this is still one off here. I don't know if you can see that. I gotta move that one more. So I gotta loosen this, get, get some more slack here. There we go. Now we're lined up. Can you see? Hopefully you can see that. We're lined up with the mark. So now I gotta fish this back on the back one. This is how I do it. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do it. This seems to work good for me. Okay, get it on the back pulley and then we can feed it under this tension or this idler pulley. Hold it all on there for a minute. Okay, so now we're on there. Now, I'm gonna have to get this rear pulley lined up with the line, and it's way off right now, so I'm gonna use my end wrench again to adjust that. So I'm gonna get some slack here for a second. Oh, I lost this front one again. I'm gonna put a clamp on here now that I got that lined up to make sure that doesn't pop off while I'm getting the back one on. Gotta get this under the idler pulley. So now that I got it on the pulley, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the whole thing a little ways so that I can bring the belt forward and this line forward so I can see the line on that one better on the rear. All right. So I brought it forward. Now I can see the line a little better. So our mark's still lined up there. Now, I'm actually going to go backwards with this rear one. So I'm bringing that back sprocket backwards to line up with that mark. As you can see, we're pretty close. We got the tick mark there and the line right there. So we just need to go a little bit farther back. <clears throat> right there. So that is lined up. This is lined up and our crank is lined up. Now we should be ready to put our tensioner on and start putting things back together. Let's check this bottom one. Make sure it's still right. Yes, our tick mark is still lined up with our line. So where everything is ready, we just need to get our tensioner on there, which will push that against the belt and keep everything where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bracket just so it's not in my way while I put the tensioner on. Well guys, I think I screwed something up. This wasn't this way on the Avalon that I just did recently, but I cannot get this tensioner in there since I already have the tensioner pulley already mounted. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is take the tensioner pulley back off so I can get the tensioner in there first and then install the tensioner pulley after it because there just isn't enough room to get it in. I'm trying not to lose my belt that I've got already in place. All right, now that I got that out, I got more room. I can put this hopefully in there behind.
Now we got the tensioner in place. Now we can put that tensioner pulley back in place. All right, that was a little bit of a pain. I had to take this back off to get this tensioner in. And then even putting this back in was a little bit difficult because it's got some tension even though it's, this tensioner is not let loose yet. Now I gotta go check my um, upper pulleys to make sure they're in line. This one still is, so I'm good there. This one is here, it's still good, but I think the back one moved. So I'm gonna have to adjust that. It's one more overview of what I did to get this belt on. I started with the crankshaft pulley, got it rotated where I could line it up with the line on the belt, got that in place. This little piece here holds it in place. So it doesn't pop off real easy. Then I lined up the front one with its mark, a little hole in the sprocket here. And then I lined up the back one. Then you need to go down here and get this new tensioner put on in place because you can't get it in once you get this uh, tensioner pulley in. So even though I had put it on first, I had to remove it to get this tensioner in and then I put this back on and it's kind of tough to get a bit in there. It puts a little tension on the belt, just getting that in there. And then I went back up and checked my, my marks. This one here had moved a little bit. So I, I popped it off this idler pulley to get a little slack and then moved it to where it lined up. And now as you can see, hopefully, that mark on the belt is lined up with the mark on the sprocket. Same thing here. So now, got my idler pulley in, got my water pump in, everything's lined up. Now I'm ready to pull that pin on that tensioner and let it do its job. And actually, it must have already came out. So we are tensioned up. I'm just making sure that that tensioner looks like it's actually activated. Oh yeah, yep. It's coming out, so we're tensioned up. All right, we're gonna start with this piece here. It goes over the uh, water pump area. Next, we're putting on this cover here. Before we can do that, we have to put this washer back on. down here we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, crank pulley back on just goes on just like this line it up with your keyway we're gonna put this bracket back on for the steering pump We'll get that belt on while we're down here as well. Has to be in the up position to get enough slack to get that belt on. And you need every little bit. I still ain't got enough. I may have to just take that bolt out for now. Put it back in. I think I'm gonna rotate that crank a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go. Bring that back down. There we go. All right, just snug this belt up. It's actually really snug right now, so I probably don't need to do anything to it except tighten it. But if you needed to, take a crowbar and just bring that steering puff down a little bit. There's that. Now I just have this cover here that goes on on the top. Just gotta fish it in there. I'm 
So I just want to make this a point. You have to have the upper plastic on first before you get the lower plastic on or it won't work. The top one goes underneath the bottom one. So I just had to redo all this to get that back off to get it the right way. So just save yourself some work and do that the right way first time. And so we're gonna tighten this up a little bit by prying this down. All right, that's all together. Gonna go around and tighten all these 10 millimeter screws up real quick. We got all this bolts tightened up. Now we're going to get this uh, motor mount put back together. Alright, the last thing we need to do is get this uh, alternator belt on. Alright, now we just gotta tighten it back up. line gets hooked back up here and we're gonna put our antifreeze back in we will have to add some antifreeze because obviously we lost some when we pulled that water pump off Alright guys, a moment of truth. Everything's back together. We're ready to fire it up and see if it runs. Hey, we're running. We're just gonna add some antifreeze while it's running here to make sure it gets rid of any air pockets. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today. Hope you guys got some out of this video. If you did, uh, give us a like and uh, think about subscribing. It helps more people see it. Until next time guys, good luck with all your projects.